of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached Jesus. Master, they said to him, we want you to do us a favor. He said to them, what is it you want me to do for you? They said to him, allow us to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You do not know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I must drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I must be baptized? They replied, we can. Jesus said to them, the cup that I must drink you shall drink and with the baptism with which I must be baptized you shall be baptized. But for seats at my right hand and on my left, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those to whom they have been allotted. When the other heard, ten heard this, they began to feel indignant with James and John. So Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that among the pagans their so-called rulers lord it over them, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. No, anyone who wants to become great among you must be your servant, and anyone who wants to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man himself <coughs> did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Morning all, morning all, a special welcome to any new people, we'll welcome you later at another time, other people will do that I'm sure. Uh, somehow or other there's a change in the, in the weather hasn't it, so it feels as though it wants, doesn't want to go back to winter again but it won't, it won't happen I promise it won't happen. Um, I'm reminded uh, James and John the sons of Zebedee when well, we studied scripture you know, going in the seminary, which is so long ago I can hardly remember it. And I can remember very little of what I learned as a student, I can tell you. But one thing I do, we did an oral exam every year, five minutes with the professor, every term. Frightening, absolutely frightening. And he always had the Latin, Latin text. And I remember one of my confreres got asked, who was the father of the sons of Zebedee? <laughs> And he said, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that's, that's a little bit of my past that needs healing. Yeah, so the sons of Zebedee, James and John, approached Jesus and said, Master, we want you to do us a favor. And Jesus said to them, what is it that you want me to do for you? Jesus says that question many times in the scriptures. What do you want me to do for you? One time we might be able to draw that out and the way that people answered the question, you know. What would you say if Jesus said, what do you want me to do? You know, Wait a minute or can you, uh, you know, half heal my leg or can you solve some of, you know, what do you want me to do? Next week we'll see Bartimaeus. He's the best one at answering that question. He wanted a lot straight away. Lord, that I can see again. Bow. Jesus knew what he wanted. These two guys wanted some promotion in the kingdom. They wanted to sit one at the right hand and one at the other. And Jesus gives them an invitation uh, to, be, to be martyrs, to be martyrs, to give their life. Can you drink the cup and can you be baptised with the baptism? And they say they can. I wonder if they knew what it meant. Hardly, right? hardly. But we know what Jesus meant by the cup that he must drink in the garden when he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. And uh, I don't know, I struggle with, with the concept of being a martyr for the Lord <laughs> very much. I wasn't keen on it. I'll give you a clue. I wasn't very keen on it at all. And I, I certainly didn't volunteer for it. And I struggle with the thought, what would, what would I do, you know? 
uh, I was listening, reading during the week of Teresa of Avila. She ran away from home when she was four with the boy, you know, you know, her, her mate. Had, I don't think they were at school, her neighbor, four-year-olds. Ran away from home when they heard that people were being persecuted for the faith in Africa. She left, ran away at home at four years of age to try and get to Africa so that she could be a martyr for Jesus. You know, I never had that in my heart, I can tell you. I ran away from home at about the same age, but for a totally different reason, <laughs> for which <laughs> I caused my mother and father a lot of grief. Um, you know, like that, that you read in the lives of the martyrs, and, you, and then you say to the Lord, how come I haven't got that? I haven't got that fire in me that I really want to... I, I'm really looking forward to dying for the faith. I never had it, and I can tell you I still haven't got it. I still haven't got it, but I've learned. I've learned to live with what commitment means and what Jesus' answer means. So that, am I willing to drink the cup and to take the baptism, which, which I must be baptised? Uh, seats at the right hand and the left hand are not available to me. That's fine. But they belong to those who have been allotted. But what's available to me is to, to know that the cup that's been allotted to me and the baptism that's been allotted to me is a call from the Lord, and I just learnt and learnt to be able to say with all my heart, if the Lord gives me the call, the Lord will give me the power. If with the call comes the power, in every aspect of the spiritual life, with the call comes the power. And, you know, every day uh, we don't know the future. Thanks be to God, in many ways we've got no idea where the Lord will call us along the way, but we're ready to go and we're ready to be with him. We hope it doesn't involve too much suffering and too much pain, and we hope it doesn't involve death, but we trust the Lord. With the call will come the power, and I've got to that stage with the Lord. You know, this caused great indignation, I love that word, among the apostles. When the other apostles heard that James and John were looking for the better spots, right? Jesus noticed that they began to feel indignant. There used to be a collection in the city archdiocese once a year for sick and indigent priest. <laughs> and my parish priest, an Irishman at the time, used to call it sick and indignant priest. Uh, there's a slight difference between the two words, all right? So when I, when, again, when I see this word in the scripture, it reminds me of indignant priests, um, indigent. Uh, they were indignant. They were angry with them. They were uh, concerned that someone else was getting in underneath them for the good jobs. They wanted the jobs themselves. That's, that's what it's all about. And then Jesus said, they're among the pagans. Uh, their so-called rulers lord it over them, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. And, and I, I want to tell you, it doesn't happen here. In the conference recently, there were many calls made for volunteers, you know. Will 10 men come and help us lift the billiard table? Do you remember that one? And we got eight straight away, and a little while later we got 10. You know, like you try and lift a billiard table, it's not easy. Um, uh, Deborah asked a couple of times to bring vestments from downstairs to upstairs. You know that. They're things that I saw and noticed. But there were many other things I didn't see. The people in the tax shop never got to hear a conference talk. The guys out on the parking and the ladies out on the parking, I don't know who they were or what they were doing, but I know they did a good job and solved all the parking. And you know, there comes a time and we always need people that will serve. And uh, we learn that, and we learn that in the community. We learn that in any family. Anyone who wants to become great among you must be your servant, and anyone who wants to be first among you must be the slave of all. Why? Because the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to, be, to, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the first time we find the term the Son of Man in Mark. Um, that's... Uh, a talk in itself, it's, it's Jesus' preferred title for himself, Son of Man. It's from Daniel. It's um, 
probably means in good Australian translation of this means a bloke, means a bloke. But it's a bloke with a biblical reference, with a biblical thought behind it. And it's the son of man that will see the angels going up and down to heaven. It will be, it's, it's the, what's nice about it, it's the preferred title that Jesus used for himself. And as we get almost to the beginning of the Passion and Holy Week in the Gospel of Mark, we're up to the 29th Sunday, so we're getting, once we turn 30 in the liturgical year, we're getting pretty close to the end of the year. We're getting close to Advent. So this phrase will come more and more in the Gospel, in the Gospel especially of Mark. So uh, are we prepared to be martyrs? Well, my answer is a little bit more conditional now than what it was. Uh, Lord, if that's what you want, I'm prepared to be a martyr. I can come to that, but please, Lord, have some other plan for me because <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for that. In all honesty, that's where I'm up to. I'm not into running away from home to get straight to the Middle East so that I can give my life for the Lord. Uh, Martyrs, the people that are there, we remember them in our prayers and pray for them every day. And we thank God for the inspiration and the great love that comes from the great saints that lived their whole life so that they could die for the Lord. Amen.